So today I'm going to talk to you about Cute Tractor, which is a tool I've been building over the last few months, uh, just kind of in my free time. Who here, can I just have a show of hands, who's heard of cucumber? Not, not what you eat, but the... <laughs> cool. And who's actually used it? Okay. Less amount of people. Uh, okay. So Cucumber Scenarios, written in plain English, are a great tool for product owners, testers, and developers to collaborate in what's known as the Three Amigos session. A Three Amigos session doesn't have to be another ceremony that, like your, your daily stand-ups or your retrospectives, but um, it, it's kind of something to get together like ad hoc and make sure that like, the people from the three disciplines are kind of talking the same language and kind of thinking in the same way when building a product. They'll get together and discuss functional requirements and write scenarios in a given when then format, otherwise known as Gherkin syntax. Cucumber can then allow you to map the English statements written as regular expressions to functions that drive the browser. However, quite a lot of effort is involved from a development perspective uh, with writing and maintaining st step definitions or the, or the actual kind of language, as, as I say, that drive, drive the browser, uh, battling with protractor code or whatever language you're using for your Selenium bindings, and usually result in hand-rolled frameworks being created to stop you from duplicating effort, stop, stop you from repeating yourself. If you think back to writing applications with like jQuery and handlebars, for example, there's like thousands of ways you could build an application. And there still is with mo modern frameworks, but obviously less so. And replicating this effort becomes a problem when you just want to get stuff tested. And sure, it can be fun to write your own framework, but not so fun for the, the next person after you've moved company. Often in my experience, I've seen the final scenarios that, that are kind of written into the code base differ to those that were agreed in the Three Amigos session. And it's due to kind of techn technical limitations, ambiguous step definitions, and different language maybe used in previous Three, three Amigos sessions. Kind of leading you to create more work. Cute Tractor provides an opinionated framework and vocabulary for the Three Amigos session for, for you to kind of use that, that, that language and make sure that everyone's on the same page. The vocabulary, also known as step definitions, uh, allows you to do common actions, for example, submitting a form, filling out and submitting a form or clicking a link, and common assertions, for example, checking that a cookie has been set, or checking that the thank you text after you've submitted the form is there on the next page, or maybe ch checking that the title of the page is correct. Support those scenarios with uh, the config file that's provided with Cute Tractor when you install it, and a page object that contains CSS selectors of the HTML that you're interacting with, labeled up in plain English in a YAML format. And you have fully functional UI tests in a way that scales. The, the page object, so, so you're going to end up writing a page object basically for each page that you're testing. And the give, given I am on the name of page, uh, this one, step definition will set this, this page object that, to, to be in use. And steps that go to URLs, uh, for, for example, that one, will look for the base URL in the configuration, uh, just at the bottom there, and append the path from the current page object, which in our case is just slash, which is, which is just the home page.
You can put full URLs in your page object, which is what uh, comes with the sample. But uh, that's not quite so helpful if you want to test on different environments, for example, staging, QA, and production. Tractor also provides an HTML test report and screenshots on failure. However, you can create screenshots at various key points, if you wish, using the take a screenshot step definition. If you, if you run that test, then you'll get the path to the, to the screenshot, the PNG spat out in the terminal. And if you're using iTerm, then you can just hold command, click that link, and it'll open up in preview if you're on iOS. Oh, sorry, not iOS, uh, Mac OS. So, Q, uh, sorry, Protractor provides an API in Node.js for talking to different browsers via Selenium. Could I have a show of hands who's used Protractor before? And could I have a show of hand who likes the joke up, up there? Cool. <laughs> that, that takes me on to false positives. Um, so a false positive is one where the, where the test is passing, and, but it but it's, shouldn't really be passing. So it gives you the green light, and re really there's, there's a problem. To, to kind of get around some of these, you, you want to always return a promise in your step definitions. If you're using async await, rather than just raw promises, then you'll get that for free. And something to note is, is that if you return undefined in your step definitions, the, the test will pass regardless. Which I, I think, I don't know what, why Cucumber has done that, Cucumber.js at least, but that, that's how it is. So I recommend if you can use async await if you're using a kind of more recent node version. And false negatives, um, are where you get a, a failure, but actually it should be, should be passing. And generally it's due to timeouts and probably due to network latency. Um, so I, I recommend kind of adjusting your timeout, timeouts depending on your environment and how many kind of calls are being made and what have you. Obviously you want lower for, for local when you're testing on a local fast machine that you're, you're testing against mocks, for example and then maybe longer for your staging environment. And I recommend having a different configuration file, the config that I showed you earlier per, per environment. So running a different one in your CI, for example. By default, Tractor talks to Selenium's Chrome driver, but Tractor provides, sorry, in, includes the Cucumber Protractor framework, so you can easily configure it to point to various cloud solutions such as browser stack or source labs. And this allows you to kind of test against, say, uh, Safari and, and Firefox, and even mobile devices as well. If you wish to combine steps or maybe hide implementation details that, uh, say, product owners wouldn't be so interested in, then Tractor provides an easy to use API that wraps, sorry, that wraps Protractor code for you to create your own step definitions really easily. Until I started using Cucumber, I underestimated the, the power of it and it actually satisfied all our requirements when we, when we were using it to test the functionality of a product at Capital One. It gives you outlines with examples for looping whole scenarios. So in this case, we've got, um, in, in orange, we've got the examples, and the page is just that kind of like the variable, the placeholder, and that will loop over the whole scenario twice with two, two different variables, basically. It gives you tags, or at, at tags, shown in blue, and that allows you to run individual examples or individual scenarios or a subset of examples or scenarios. 
and it gives you hooks as well so that you can run code before or after each scenario or specifically tagged ones. And it also has internationalization, so you can write scenarios in other natural languages if you want to. The, the um, step definitions that are provided with Cute Tractor are, are just in English, but you could always fork it and just change that really easily. Or contribute to the project and find out a way to kind of internationalize it. Also, it comes with data tables so that you can loop over individual steps. So here we've got uh, the, the final step that and I expect the following to be visible, looped over six times. Kuk Tractor can also automatically add snippets or live templates for IntelliSense or autocomplete in your favorite IDE. And this allows you to speed up scenario writing and st stick to the step, the, the step definitions provided. I'm probably going to move this out into a separate node module uh, for creating the snippets because it's quite kind of baked in at the moment, but I'm going to make it more generic if, if people might find that kind of useful. Uh, it supports uh, IntelliJ, like the JetBrains ones, uh, Sublime, VS Code, Atom, It runs on Linux, Mac, and Windows. And so to set up uh, the setup for Mac, which is almost identical for PC, uh, you just see, see the medium, medium article for PC. Install iTerm2 if you're on Mac, as I said before, for the screenshots, just uh, accessing them really quickly. And Create yourself a folder and initialize npm in it. Uh, install Cute Tractor and the sample. So just npm install uh, Cucumber Tractor. And that, that's the package name for Cute Tractor. And then just run that script to give you the, the configuration and the sample. And then run the sample and you'll use that for running your, all your tests or uh, a subset for, from then on, npm run ct for Qt Tractor. So out, out of the box, uh, you get a sample of what I refer to as a functional test, te which tests a single piece of functionality. In order to add more functional tests, you're going to need to deep link into your application so that you can test a certain page. And if you aren't able to, so you've got like a number of steps that are under one uh, route, then you'll need to create some setup, setup steps, which is really easy to do. And the same applies to end-to-end -end testing. Cute Tractor allows you to also be able to test paths, also known as E2E or end-to-end -end testing so that you can say check that uh, if, you, if you've got an e-commerce website that you can go from your homepage through the products and then maybe check out in the basket, for example. Use analytics to work out your happy paths. Don't assume you know how your users use your site or application. And Google Analytics can assist you in working out those routes. Something to note is that the sample tests uh, test against a production URL, uh, the Google homepage. Uh, so you, you may want to test against an environment other than that to, to hit kind of mock endpoints for more consistent test reports so that you're always getting the, the green light. Uh, something you can try is testing first before you write your code for, for a new feature. And just to su summarize the features of Cute Tractor, it provides you with a runner, so you, you can do the npm run ct. Uh, it's got loads of generic step definitions, um, so you can write your given when then steps. It has snippets, so you can write those write with those really quickly and accurately. 
it has the screenshots on error for debugging, and also if you wanted to take a screenshot for whatever reason, maybe just for debugging or just for kind of showing the app, you can use that. It provides an HTML report, a Cucumber formatter so that you get nice output in the terminal, an error report summary in the terminal, and the YAML page objects, which you saw earlier, and works on Windows, Mac, and Linux. And it has the ability to really easily kind of set up against multiple, like a, like a Selenium grid, basically, multiple browsers. Um, if you want to head to Cucumber Protractor and give us a star on GitHub if you, if you think it's good. And yeah, get, get involved, send me some pull requests. So out of the box, as I say, you, you'll get a test that tests against the Google homepage. And I figured I'd just have a go at like testing against the Amazon, Amazon homepage. So this is the kind of structure you're going to get out of the box. So you've got the UI test result is, is what you'll get. Um, that's your HTML report for once you run npm run ct. And then you've got the UI test here where you've got your features, your pages, and your step definitions for any uh, custom ones that you might want to add. So given I'm on the Google homepage, so the homepage maps to this by file. So it'll look in here automatically. You can change where the, the pages lives in the configuration just at the top. Just looks in here in pages. And I've just changed the Google homepage to Amazon. And as I say, um, you can you, you should really kind of put paths into your to your page object and then set the domain in here. So what I was doing was testing with an XPath. Because XPath is a bit more powerful than using CSS selectors. Um, it's a lot uglier. So you could just create yourself uh, for your application some kind of data attributes that uh, apply to your QA kind of testing. And if I go to, if I want to click on this cell, for example, uh, I set up in here a cell button, and then I've put that into the feature file. And then I notice when I run it, uh, npm run ct, That it actually failed. So I went to the screenshot and then I noticed that it's because the page is too small. So in the configuration, here you're actually setting the initial window size. Uh, so just bump it up to kind of roughly what the screen resolution is and then rerun it. and then get the green light, fingers crossed. Cool. So to write new steps, so if I was to do this from scratch, um, you can see the IntelliSense in here. I would just go, just imagine this didn't exist. I would just copy the, the selectors that I've got, so cell, cell button, for example. And I would just go given, given uh, on page, or I could just go given page, and paste, oh, sorry, Google homepage, and then when, when click, then um, I could expect it to be on a separate URL, for example. So uh, I could just do then, then, 
URL, or then URL contains, and then I could put the URL of what it is, what it goes to. So, cell contains this horrible URL. Uh, maybe like that or something. And fingers crossed, I haven't practiced this, so it might go horribly wrong. As I say, it's going to be faster if you're running against an environment that's against mocks, but it seems to be working. The, the um, Kube Tractor is kind of tested uh, fully that there's a React, there's a React app inside, um, which has a bunch of kind of uh, form fields or what have you, and test against that. So the test um, test runner and everything is fully tested in itself. I haven't tested the thing that's testing the test runner, so it kind of gets a bit inceptiony. Cool. Thank you. <laughs>